An American Dream Guide Chapter 1 American Dream, a song by Neil Young The American Dream Ideology 1 The traditional version of the American Dream is a lie in two major ways. The first lie is that the acquisition of material goods and money will make you happier and happier in a direct proportion, the more money you have, the happier you'll be. The truth is that money will increase your happiness until you're out of poverty and have basic material comfort. Beyond that, money cannot increase your true state of happiness. Beyond the status and worth you personally attach to material goods, they are meaningless once you have your basic material needs covered because happiness comes not from what you own but from what you do day by day to keep yourself feeling inspired, sensual, loving and good. The American dream is capitalist excess gone mad. It's not enough to aspire for one car, a nice house and good food but to fulfill all the whims money can buy no matter how frivolous. One guy owns over 90 motorbikes. Another guy lives in a big mansion yet he rarely uses more than three rooms, the kitchen, the bathroom, and the bedroom. Another guy has spent over $100,000 collecting little doll-like toys. A famous guy you see on TV most weeknights owns his own collection of antique cars in his house. Some girl on some TV show says she likes high heels so she buys over 300 pairs of them. There is something wrong when a person tries to buy happiness through material goods. It's a signal that there's something missing in their lives. They are not living fun, inspired lives for its own sake. They are trying to compensate for some emptiness by buying stuff to fill up the empty hole inside but it doesn't work because it's impossible to buy a sense of spiritual aesthetic well-being about oneself. It's something you have to discover and earn within yourself and money is not enough to get it. I've seen capitalist excess spawn two overdoses in my own little circle of acquaintances. When people have a lot of money, many invariably turn to self-destructive behaviors like gambling, booze, drugs, going to strip joints, getting involved with seedy characters for the excitement, etc. I know two guys who were decent guys until they got money. One overdosed and died, the other blew a couple million up his nose, ended up going to jail for assault because he started getting paranoid that everyone was out to get him then seems to have smartened up when he got out. He told me that when he had the money everybody came up to him trying to get something out of him. He had plenty of fair-weather friends willing to do drugs with him. He even had a few lawsuits filed against him. The point is that if he had never gotten the money he never would done what he did. There is another consequence of living in material excess that almost no one ever talks about. It's the human conscience aka karma or a sense of balance and righteousness. Everybody with a brain knows that there are millions of starving, desperate, sick people on the planet right now some of whom need less than a dollar's worth of medicine a day in order to survive yet they won't get it because of the greed and selfishness of the people with money on the planet. We all know this. Most of us turn a blind eye to it but I'm willing to bet that even the most superficial, biggest phony hooked on status knows that what he's doing is wrong when he's thinking about his life freely in an unguarded moment. If you don't, you're not human. This has a huge hidden toll on the well-to-do in our society. They love their money, their status, and their toys but they intrinsically know they are violating the natural law of the universe the native Indians lived by, take what you need and share the rest with others who need it. The second big lie of the American dream is that if you follow all the rules and work hard, you will get your just due and be rewarded with financial security. A large part of capitalist success is luck, chance, being in the right place at the right time. Some people fluke out and get rich relatively easily by capturing the zeitgeist while others work very hard and never see financial security. Some are born with silver spoons in their mouths. Hard work is not a guarantee of success. Hard work with intelligence is closer but there are intangibles beyond this, part of which have no rhyme nor reason. Many jobs are structured to keep people in poverty. A large segment of the economy is low-paying jobs. No matter how much overtime they work, people can never afford a down payment on a house by working these jobs. Don't expect some genie to come popping out of a lamp to help you just because you will it so with good intentions like all that new age, 
self-help junk the phony secret of intention preaches at you while turning a comfortable profit selling you this modern brand of snake oil. Don't let yourself get brainwashed to the extent that you sacrifice who you really are for the system's version of success. How many assholes have I known who think that the bigger the square footage of their house is, the happier or more powerful they'll be? I knew one guy who was really impressed with himself at getting his backyard swimming pool deck built out of some fancy-ass Italian tiles which was a clear metaphor to me as to what's wrong with the American dream. It preaches at us to be arrogant, loudmouth show-offs worshipping excess who buy a lot of crap we don't need to impress everybody with how successful we are while half of the world is starving and there's some guy less than a mile away who's homeless. There's a massive disharmony in the equation. We are violating the basic law of the universe which is take what you need, leave the rest for others. Don't exploit anyone or anything. Many people have worked their asses off only to end up destitute while their bosses got rich. Exploitation is PAR for the course. The American Dream Ideology too. Many people get brainwashed by glittery images on TV then end up making stupid investments or starting up businesses that are way over their heads because they think it will be relatively easy based on the indoctrination on TV where everything seems so easy and straightforward with characters in sitcoms working menial jobs living in lavish apartments. Then there's this constant expansionist mindset capitalism is always pushing. If your business is going well, expand. Open a new location or start a second business. How many people got suckered into this one, expanding to bankruptcy? If you're making a decent living, how much happier can you get by taking on more business? It never ceases to amaze me how so many people who work pretty hard and are doing alright want to expand their business in the mistaken belief that it will make them happier. It's a lie of capitalism. Where is enough material goods and business enough? Expansion is not always good. We will run out of our finite resources as a planet at some point in time. You will run out of your finite time trying to earn that magical sum that represents success to you. How many of my friends from youth are now generic, middle-aged duds so far away from the charisma, freedom, fun and natural inspired power they once had? And I can't forget the one guy who got an operable pancreatic cancer. He worked his ass off all his life only to die before he was 50. What do you really own, your inspired sensibility about yourself or all that crap the world sells you? Is anything worth becoming a one-dimensional generic dud for like all those supposed winners you see on the TV news every night all looking like well-fed, pasty-faced nerds with no spark or joy in their faces? The American dream has created a socio-economic status system where some people are considered superior to others based on what they own and what position they have at work which gives them implicit favored status both out in the world and among some individuals who buy into this lie but it's not really true. We're all just fallible human beings. Nobody is really superior to anybody else even though a lot of people give people with money and status preferential treatment. This is unhealthy because it gives some people arrogant superiority complexes and morally wrong in the sense that people use their money and status to control other people and get them to do their bidding, often unwillingly. The American dream has created a one-dimensional mindset in America as to what defines success. This limits a lot of people who would rather be doing something else. How many lawyers or doctors would rather be forest rangers or truck drivers but they got sucked into the status game of particular occupations? There are very few free people left, the bohemian artists like me who want to live my life my way the way I define it regardless of how the capitalist ideology of the American dream is pushing me to become some clone manager or some caricature of success in some generic department at some generic corporation. The ideology of the American dream teaches us to not be satisfied with our lot in life, to not be happy if we have our health, some food, a bed to sleep in and a warm body to be with. The American dream teaches us to always strive for more. A used sedan is not good enough. We should aspire to get a shiny, new sportska. What this has to do with true happiness is negligible but this is the brainwashed mindset you're dealing with. Native people who were relatively happy at one time all of a sudden feel deficient and unhappy once they get indoctrinated into the rules of capitalist living. They never have enough anymore. They now always want more. The American Dream Ideology 3. 
The American dream teaches us to set goals and go for them. When we achieve them, our happiness or success level is supposed to go up a little more for the rest of our lives but this is a lie because every morning when you wake up, you have the only thing you own which is your body and spirit. You have to create your own happiness and self-respect on that particular day. It's not something you reach then you have for the rest of your life. You have to create your life every single day. No amount of money or trophies from the world can help you when you get up in the morning and face yourself as to the person you want to be or the phony image you want to hide behind. If you're a generic dud who can't run around the block in an easy sprint or have no sense of inspired spark about your life, who cares if you live in a big mansion? It can't make you feel transcendent like you're taking your life for a great ride. The American dream is an easy way to blame the individual for the problems that society caused. The politicians and wealthy businessmen make decisions that determine what happens to millions of lower class people often exploiting them somehow but they pretend they don't. Whenever they see people in poverty or need, they blame it on the people themselves, saying they're lazy or drunks insinuating they just have to work harder and follow the rules of the American dream but the truth is that society is structured such that the rich get richer while the poor get poorer and more powerless by keeping the power in the hands of the few elitists who exploit the working classes. And what about discrimination and the glass ceiling against women? There may not be overt discrimination against blacks anymore but there's still covered discrimination and new groups have taken on the roles of the bottom feeders like the Latinos, the Arabs, and disabled people. They are purposely kept powerless both to fulfill an ego need of those in power to feel dominant and to supply the workforce with low-paying menial jobs that no one really wants to do. If you watch business talk shows, you should notice that all they interview are the few people who have made it big not the millions who just make an average living or who have failed. This sugarcoats naive people's ideas about how easy the real world must be. Many millions of people live paycheck to paycheck. They make just enough to cover the bills of survival but never to get ahead and then we got pop culture TV seducing us into trying to be pop idols or reality TV champions and buying lottery tickets as our way out. They don't tell you about using your own common sense, wisdom and originality to get ahead. How many millions of people watch silly television shows night after night filling themselves up with destructive ideas rather than focusing on doing something with their lives like living by their own standard? I believe that current Western, capitalist, pop culture society brainwashes us into being eternal consumers such that we get on a work treadmill to buy a bunch of crap we don't need then we get used to this stuff and fall to pieces when our comfort level is pulled out from underneath us as it does for millions of people every year. It makes it doubly worse for you to deal with it than if you were a person of few material needs who doesn't buy into the hype of materialism or the phony cool image of pop culture entertainment. Many people divorce. Many people lose loved ones to death every year. Many pension plans crash. The stock market crashes. The weather destroys crops. Your health goes. Your child gets a serious disease or gets arrested for selling drugs. You get into an accident. You get fired. Companies go under or are bought up by vulture capitalists. Some business owners work hard all their lives only to get charged for tax evasion by the government or to be muscled out by the big, new department store down the street. I've known a restaurant in operation for 30 years told by government safety inspectors to make expensive renovations which they couldn't afford so that was the end of a lifetime of building up a business because of some insensitive government rules. There are no guarantees. Even if you do everything right and work hard, there's no guarantee they won't fire you at 50 and you won't be able to find another job in your field. There's no guarantee that your business will go on smoothly. All it takes is a competitor to undercut your price. There's no guarantee that you'll ever enjoy your retirement. When I was a naive, young teacher, two of the older professors at the college died of cancer before they ever collected a nickel of their pension. Why wait for retirement? Live now. Don't listen to anyone. Be smart by having few material needs to start out with then don't listen to all the wanks hyping investments on TV. That's their business to hype up the stock market. Be more conservative with your money. Bury it in the ground or buy a few rental properties in the middle to upper class part of town. 
the high rate of crime in America is not just committed by loner individuals looking to score. It has been helped by the traditional version of the American dream because it has spawned a huge rift between the upper class who oppress the lower class then wipes their faces in it. A lot of crime is caused by envy and jealousy. The poor kid sees all the glitter on TV, all the snotty rich people around, gets jealous and angry, wants a piece of the pie too so he goes out and hits some guy in the head to get it. Why are there half a dozen or more entertainment tabloid shows on TV every night glorifying the lifestyles of the rich and famous? The hidden agenda is to make you envious and think there's a better life over the rainbow which you must aspire to, work hard to get to and in the meanwhile try to imitate by being a good consumer buying a bunch of that crap they advertise in the TV commercials you don't need to enhance your look and perceived status out in the world. Of course this is all a lie because every morning when I wake up I feel the same regardless of whether I'm in a mansion or a little room somewhere. I only start to feel good after I go for a good run and you don't need much money to do that. The difference between me and the average American citizen is that I live by my own standard determined by who I am and what I do. I don't measure myself by the traditional version of the American dream nor compare myself to all those flakes they parade at us on the entertainment tabloid or business shows as special, superior, rich, or beautiful people. If they were truly beautiful people of substance, they would have contempt for that charade, wouldn't flaunt themselves like they do and give most of their money away to help others. The agenda is to keep the gulf between rich and poor wide to keep the rich protected in gated communities hoarding all their stuff while keeping the poor thinking that if they work hard enough they can get to this illusory place over the rainbow. The problem is that some poor and oppressed people are so desperate they know they'll never achieve the traditional version of the American dream by working low-paying jobs so all this anger and envy builds up inside until they don't care anymore and go out committing desperate crimes. A part of it is simply a feeling of getting back at all those wealthy arrogant people who drive cars bigger than they need, wear expensive clothes or talk in sagacious tones when they could get their message across by talking in plain English. What do you expect if you drive your jag into the ghetto? You're trying to rub their faces into your superiority. They'll shoot you or vandalize your car. Once you have a basic roof over your head and all your basic bills covered, material things become useless for creatively inspired intellectual and artistic types. I have my basic roof over my head and enough food to eat so my time is spent pursuing my inspired aesthetic activities not trying to get ahead in that phony rat race or the keeping up with the Joneses game out there. I laugh at all the lost souls wasting their lives, playing that game many of whom will get some serious disease caused by stress at work then realize how useless it all is. The pursuit of the American dream makes us sacrifice our true natures for artificial things that don't really matter all that much. Take a tip from your pets as to what's real in life. They eat, run around to get some exercise, sleep, have sex, get some loving and hang out with their friends for a while. Anything else is bull like the kind of car you drive or how big your house is beyond what you need. Beyond all this, what is the spiritual cost of buying into the American dream? How many people get hardened, ruthless and brainwashed by the competitive mindset to stand on the pedestal at the top alone? How many men destroy their relationships with their families to get ahead at the corporation? How many fathers drive their sons to suicide or drug addiction because of the enormous pressure they put on them to succeed in a capitalist world as opposed to doing what they really want to do? The American dream is about money. The artist's dream is about feeling what's deep in your soul and connecting to other people but this is not really valued in America. Pop culture entertainers are glitzed up and put on a pedestal but that's not true art. That's just another manufactured capitalist product meant to tillitate the stupid, empty masses and get them to spend their money on some silly illusion of a phony cool image. This is where we stand. You got these one-dimensional people on the cover of Forbes magazine worshipping business but where are their desires to understand who they are, take their lives for a great inspired aesthetic experience and connect with others in a deep emotional way? These things almost don't exist among our brainwashed culture of men who measure themselves and everybody else by the car they drive and their position at work. It's a lost society. There's no doubt about it. Despite our pretenses, most of us are a bunch of lost souls detached from our true natures. Nobody fools me. I can tell what somebody's like by looking at them. 
Many of us look like a bunch of chubby, pale, soulless nerds not like healthy, strong, inspired people. Be careful what you wish for. How much of your dreams are determined by others? How free are you to pursue your own destiny? How many people lose their souls trying to get successful, with success defined out there as opposed to who they really are? Get it through your head what you're really all about before you go jumping into the rat race of the American dream blindly. How many millions of people work hard all their lives only to realize at the end that that's not what they really wanted to do? How many men feel trapped in soulless jobs where they've sacrificed whatever sense of youth, freedom, originality and inspiration they might have once had? The American dream is not all it's cracked up to be nor is the bohemian artist's dream. I've lived both. You have to have one foot in each world. Find a middle ground in there somewhere before you leap into a world that could crush your soul. Read my books to help you become the master of your own destiny. The American Dream Ideology 4 The Chinese cite the following five factors as determinants of success in order. 1. Fate, Destiny, What You're Born With 2. Luck, Chance 3. Feng Shui 4. Charity, Virtue, Being Good, Karma 5. Hard Work, Knowledge I've been studying business and career success for several years in writing these books. In the West, we attribute our success to ourselves and failures to the outside world. There's a huge propaganda machine telling us that success is based on hard work, wisdom and education but it's not necessarily true. Lots of people with equal abilities and equal effort end up at different places on the socio-economic ladder but we in the West don't seem to accept this fact of life. They try to tell us it's all about ability but it's about destiny and luck too. That's an intangible X factor that nobody can anticipate and prepare for. Why does the news on any given night tell us about some young person getting murdered or killed while in the business news? Some other young person has just struck it rich with a fluky move or being in the right place at the right time as with the internet millionaires. Why does one actor become a movie star while another one with superior abilities never get the big break? You can maximize your chances by working hard, getting educated and trusting your intuition but they are still no guarantee. We have to get it through our heads that hard work and education do not automatically lead to business and career success. That's why I think the Chinese are superior to us in their understanding of the human condition. There are factors beyond your control that can't explain fate or luck. Until you understand this defect in the American dream ideology, you will be living in delusion. Another thing is the definition of success and happiness. Capitalist society gives us the view that material excess and status slash power are the keys to success and happiness but as an artist of my life, I don't buy into this. I live alone in my head. I strive to earn money to cover my bills by doing something I love to do anyway. Other than that, my life is mine to do with as I please because that's my definition of success, to spend as much time as I can doing what I want to do freely. I don't have expensive tastes. I prefer to own as little as possible because I think material things are mostly frivolous wants not needs, they do nothing for my state of happiness and they're a burden too. Inspiration is my key to life, how I create it to earn my self-respect and feel good every day. I've been watching a few business startup shows that I think are way over the top with their optimistic, positive outlooks. This is poison to naive people, filling them up with ideas on how easy success is in starting a business venture. On these two shows, they interview only people who have been successful. They never talk about business problems, failures or bankruptcies. They gloss it up and tell their stories through rose-colored glasses, never breathing a word about the hard work and uncertainty through all the lean years. You only see one side of the story. Some guy or gal are going on some success business show so they play the hype up too to butter their egos since they are now a so-called business success by virtue of being on this show. I'm warning you, don't buy into all the capitalist self-help hype out there geared to sell books and tape programs full of empty hype to fill your mind up with false hope. Don't live in delusion. Be more prudent. Look before you leap. Some people say they made it because they were too naive to analyze it therefore conclude it was a dumb move but many, 
many people fail this way and you never see it in the media. This is the dirty little secret of life in the capitalist world of material excess dreams. Don't invest money in anything until you've done some serious homework beforehand. They call it due diligence. Know what you're getting into and know the truth about human nature which is to be self-centered and selfish by design. We are all trained to be charming or at least functional with other people, to put on a happy, social face. In fact, wolves in sheep's clothing are better at this than anybody else. After 50 years on this planet, I can play along with anybody but I'm as cynical as hell. If you claim that most people are basically good, you've lived a sheltered life up until now. Do not trust people. Pretend that you trust them but if they ask for something, just tell the truth, you've been ripped off before, you don't know them well enough to trust them. Good people don't ask for money or favors out of the blue. If they try to make you feel guilty, break off relations with them. They're manipulative. If you put your faith in people, sooner or later, you'll get a knife in the back or a lawsuit. Be especially cautious about going into business with anyone. Business partners have a way of turning on each other. Go solo unless you really trust your future business partner. I'm not overly paranoid. I've been around and I'm on the streets every day jogging and biking. Why do people cut me off, almost killing me a number of times? Why do people beep their horns just to be assholes and then give me the finger from the security of their cars? Just because somebody gets on some show saying they made millions selling colored nail polish, natural cosmetics or maternity fashions doesn't mean you will. Personally, I think they're all lying or at least inflating their sales figures. Who's buying all this useless, frivolous stuff? The area I live in is down to earth and practical. People don't spend much money buying useless crap at fancy boutiques, at least not the people I know. Some guy says he makes a hundred million a year selling beauty products slash cosmetics for men. I don't know one man who buys cosmetics for his skin or whatever it is they use them for. You are what you are. You can't enhance your look with crap you buy at the store. I think most men know that. And imagine if another man noticed the makeup on you. Could your masculine ego handle being caught buying into that pretense called metrosexuality? If you want to go into business, choose something practical that people really need over frivolous. A plumber is way more in demand than somebody who creates a new toy or sneakers you can write on. Most people who make it in business do it on less than a half million dollars in gross sales over a year. They're moderately successful. It's not like I see on these business shows where everybody's allegedly grossing at least 10 million a year, even for the silliest products like a toilet paper clamp or vodka with caffeine in it to keep you up. Some claim to gross hundreds of million a year. Is our society that lost that millions of people out there are buying useless, frivolous stuff to try to make themselves feel good? The American Dream Ideology 5 The fake American dream is to make as much money as you can any way you can then show off to others how rich you are, baby. This is the message blasted through the media all the time. The real American dream is to do what you want and make a living at it. It's not really about making more money than you need so you can buy a bunch of junk you don't need. It's about honoring your inspired spirit. The American dream breeds greed, corruption, crime, envy, jealousy, competition, social classes, and alienation. A lack of money and an excess of money are the roots of most evil. My life is about what I do every day, not about what I own. I own what I need, I strive to earn my bread doing what I love to do anyway that can help other people, I have contempt for home decor and the cults of materialism and pop culture entertainment and I believe that material excess is a sin against the spirit of life given to us by our creator. Take what you need and leave the rest. Anybody who lives in excessive, frivolous splendor while we're all perfectly aware of all the poverty, need and suffering in the world is not a good person regardless of what face they put on for the world. My life is about what I do every day, not about what I own. I own what I need, I strive to earn my bread doing what I love to do anyway that can help other people, I have contempt for home decor and the cults of materialism and pop culture entertainment and I believe that material excess is a sin against the spirit of life given to us by our creator. 
take what you need and leave the rest. Anybody who lives in excessive, frivolous splendor while we're all perfectly aware of all the poverty, need and suffering in the world is not a good person regardless of what face they put on for the world. My life is about what I do every single day. It's about staying inspired and feeling good forever. I figured out how to do this but not too many people seem to realize that this is the real prize of life, figure out how to run with your life all the time, having a good time living it. I live by my own standard answering to my soul as opposed to the standards of the capitalist world which have given most of us our definitions of happiness and success so to my way of thinking, most of us have sold our souls for some illusion we borrowed that was manufactured by the system, mostly advertisers and TV producers in back rooms trying to sell us on their images of cool, fun, happiness and success in order to sell us something in the real world. My life is about staying inspired and keeping a hold of my youth by answering to my inner standard to release all my natural, inherent energy every day. The American dream is a big lie to me because even though I need money to survive and would like financial security for life, most material things mean nothing to me and I could care less about showing off to others how wealthy I am so that means I don't need all that much compared to the average citizen and I don't have to buy a house much bigger than I need to try to show off to others how successful I must be. You don't need a 5,000 square foot house because you can only be in one room at a time. My house is to rest in at the end of the day. I need one room for that. The rest of my life is spent releasing my natural energy. I live to release the spirit that is me. I do most of that outdoors, in my basement gym or in front of a computer. It's not like I need a huge house for that. I have no expensive hobbies. To me, a 12-mile run beats everything for an intense rush of self-respect and transcendence. I was on my friend's yacht or big sailboat once whatever you want to call it and I got so stir-crazy I jumped off and swam to shore. They brainwash us to think it would be real cool to cruise around in a sailboat drinking tequila but so what? It's not like you're hitting a grand slam in your experience and exertion of life. It does nothing to inspire you or make you feel like you're getting a good run out of your journey. How can any human being with a conscience live in extreme excess while we're all perfectly aware that there are starving children all over the world right now? I was lucky in the sense that I discovered I was massively brainwashed by the system's definitions of happiness and success at about the age of 28 so I rejected the standard American dream ideology to pursue the purity in my soul. I did exactly as I pleased with my time and sacrificed my time to doing things I didn't want to do only to the extent that I had to cover my bills which weren't that high because my needs are few. Think twice before you buy into the system's views on success and happiness and waste the finite time of your life doing stuff you have no intrinsic interest in unless you're such a generic, boring dud that you don't care about your life beyond earning enough money to buy a big TV, beer, cool clothes, and some junk food. Work in the capitalist corporate sense is the biggest lie because they try to tie it in with status, prestige, and identity but everybody's expendable, they just use you for labor in exchange for money then when they're all done with you, they throw you away and forget about you, even the big cheeses so if you tie your ego up into that, you'll have no base within to fall back on when it's over. Many people sacrifice themselves for their careers then feel empty when they're over because whatever they did in their job was not inherent to the real them in their souls so beyond the money they got out of it, they were essentially wasting their lives doing something that wasn't inherent to them. With capitalism, nice guys finish last. You have to be an arrogant, competitive, cutthroat elitist to rise to the top and stand on the pedestal above everyone else. This is the ideology of the American dream. Get what you can for yourself, protect it, and screw everybody else. That's what our definition of a winner is. I was born a cooperative, friendly guy. I remember I was like this in grade 1 then soon after they started messing with my mind by trying to make me compete with my friends in academic marks, sports, popularity, coolness, etc. In order to succeed, the economy has to constantly expand so it moves beyond the functional what we actually need to live our lives to encompass the frivolous and the novel which take over people's minds and turn them into mush. Why are we a bunch of overweight people hooked on pop culture entertainment rather than actually doing something original and inspired, looking healthy and wholesome like we're enjoying our lives? 
Everybody wants the quick fix as opposed to being artists of their lives. Blame it on your society and the American dream ideology which keeps pumping out all kinds of useless crap in an effort to keep selling product to the brainwashed masses looking for something to fill up their empty lives now that they have sold their true natures for life within the system. There's a show on TV that purports to help make people rich but the fallacy is that it's not trying to inspire them to do something noble, useful, and worthy to help others in a serious way. It's a slick show about making money fast by coming up with some gimmick that the stupid plebes will buy. It encourages the viewers to create a bunch of frivolous products that people don't really need. I haven't seen one product of all the ideas they've showcased that I would say has true merit as something people can sincerely benefit from. Some woman creates underwear that goes down to the knees and doesn't leave panty lines and she's praised as a genius inventor. Is this where the collective mindset of our society is at? concerned with panty lines or the one-minute manicure while there are kids starving somewhere and somebody homeless within a couple of miles of where you live. Somebody else invents something to brew tea on an invention show and the judges say it's a grand slam. Why do I need an extra device in my kitchen when I just have to throw a tea bag in a cup, what's the big qualitative difference in the taste? How about a machine that cuts bagels? That's just what we need. It's a sign of a lost society when we start getting gadgets for stuff like this. What about using a knife? How about electric knives and electric can openers? I'll bet somebody out there has a patent for a gadget that wipes your ass. Go to usbta.gov and look for it. What are all those TV shopping networks constantly selling? To me, it's crap for empty people to fill their empty lives up with. The stuff they sell is ridiculous yet there's always some lonely, lost soul willing to buy it to fill herself up with a good feeling for a minute or two. Infomercials are a great metaphor for the lost society we live in. Solve all your problems and find happiness by buying useless stuff you don't need on TV. Brainwashed, empty people without the guts or the fortitude to live original, inspired lives for themselves buy into this stuff so they work their dull jobs to pay for all the useless crap they own and they still feel empty inside with their houses full of junk they got suckered into buying. And then you got all these people who want to make it big by being a pop idol. That's what the world really needs, another arrogant punk ass thinking their hot stuff singing some silly song, pouting at the camera on their music video. Everybody wants to be a star which adds nothing to the progress of the world. It reminds me of the final days of the Roman Empire before the Great Fall. Are we that lost that will buy anything to enhance our vanity when anybody that knows anything knows you can't buy beauty in clothing or cosmetics? You get it by being who you naturally are, releasing your natural energy every day. Who cares about a toilet paper clamp, a foot toilet flusher, lowrider underwear, maternity fashion clothes as opposed to regular maternity clothes, a new board game? a new type of fork to eat with, jewelry for sneakers, a new salad chopper as opposed to a knife, etc. It's all crap. That's why our society is going down the tubes. We're looking for happiness by overdosing on material goods rather than focusing on who we are as individuals and trying to develop ourselves to live interesting, inspired, noble lives. The reason I'm putting this article in a money and a jobs book is to tell you that you've been sold a bill of goods as to what happiness and success are. It's so pervasive that you get envious when you see all these people living lives of material excess on TV so you sell your soul to reach this illusory lifestyle then after you've worked your butt off and own a bunch of crap you don't really need, you realize you're no happier than before. It's still you alone in your head. Your state of consciousness is exactly the same as before because happiness is deeper than that. It's becoming the person you really want to be freely not the person you've been brainwashed to be in order to be successful according to the standards set out there somewhere. I knew some girl who came over from Russia and married a buddy of mine. She had him wrapped around her finger with her brainwash of what happiness is. He was a happy easy-going guy before he met her but she had him thinking he had to constantly work to upgrade his lifestyle to a bigger house, better furniture, better car, the so-called finer things in life but of course it didn't work because in the end, if you've got any guts, you can't deny who you really are. They divorced. 
he's still working as a plumber and she's selling real estate and has an accounting job looking for some rich guy who thinks like her but she got her immigration papers through the marriage so she used him to get what she wanted and that's my point. There's no love in her, just a desire to reach this illusory material lifestyle in her head where she thinks she'll be feeling a quantum leap higher than she does now but she won't because happiness comes from what you do every day not from what you're surrounded by.